Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In this video, we are going to talk about something interesting, which is security. Now, so far the application that we have built, if we go ahead and run the test for this application, as you can see, has the web page security score of E. And let's find out why it is low. So if you scroll down and check, it is missing some of the security headers which are required for better browser security policies. For example, the X content type option, X frame option is missing. You have content security policy, uh, cross site scripting filter. We're going to learn. It. So we're going to learn how to add these security policies. Now, the first thing I'm going to know what these security policies are before we start jumping on to adding these policies. So let's take a look at the first one, the X content type options. If we click on this link, it says that it's a marker that's used by the server to indicate that the mime type advertised by the content type headers should not be changed and be followed. So ideally, uh, the value for this in your headers should be no sniff, which means that block a request if the destination is of type style, but the mime type is not text CSS and script and the mime type is not javascript mime type okay so these are some of the options uh, that you can explore more i won't be going into detail there's a documentation on developer mozilla for that so i'm going to start with this one so how do we do that so if you look at the next year's documentation about setting the headers it talks about that we have introduced the headers in nextconfig.js. So there are two ways you can set this up. The first way is through nextconfig and you can return the async headers and you can set your uh, security policies here or you can actually create a vercel.json file and add that as a JSON format. We're going to go with this approach. I'm not going to use the vercel.json. It's up to you. Uh, if you're deploying to a cell then now in my case I'm gonna put that inside of so in my case I'm going to go to the next JS config and I'm gonna paste this async headers and inside of that I will add my configuration so I've added that here you can get the code from the repository next JS headless WordPress uh, and source means this is for all and then you can set headers. The first type, the first one was X content type options. And as we've just discussed that we should set it to no sniff. So we've done that. Uh, next one is the X frame options. So let's take a look at that one. X frame options. So this basically uh, is used to indicate whether or not the browser should be allowed to render a page in an iframe frame or embedder object, right? And the value really depends on your requirement. Uh, in my case, I'm not using any iframe, so I'll just put that as a deny. But uh, you can do that for same origin or cross origin. You can check same origin or allow from specific URI in case if you are uh, rendering any of the iframes, then uh, if you are expecting it from a certain site, then you can you know provide that information uh, in that allow from URI. But in our case, I will just go with deny because I don't have any iframe. We may want to update this policy in case if we happen to use the iframes uh, later. Uh, next one up is the content security policy. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, then we have the XSS protection cross site scripting filter. And if I take a look at that, this response header basically stop the pages from loading when they detect the reflected cross-site scripting attacks. So there are different values it accepts. So I'm so there are several options available like 0, 1, 1 mode block. So I'm going with this one. So this basically enables the cross-site scripting filter. And rather than sanitizing the page, the browser will prevent the rendering of the page if an attack is detected. So I'm going for this approach. And I've gone ahead and added that as the value. And the key is basically the name of this, which is the HTTP uh, header, which is the XXSS protection. All right, so that's all you have to do. Just add that as an async header. And the last one was the content security policy. And we would probably be doing that in future videos. 
but I do want to give you some resources if you want to implement that. Go ahead and send a PR and contribute to the project uh, by sending a PR and you know you can definitely add that. But what is it? But let's first understand what is it and what is this content security policy. So this is basically a layer of security that helps to detect and mitigate certain types of attack including the cross-site scripting and data injection attacks. So there are certain configuration you need to provide that what is the type of content that you're expecting and if you know it doesn't match that those configuration then it's not going to allow those those requests to be fulfilled. Okay, so I will give you some resource where you can uh, get the information about how to set this up. So if you go to this repository, Next.js Headless WordPress, and if you click on Wiki, under Wiki, we have this link, GitHub Vercel Next.js. There's an example with strict uh, content security policy. You can create underscore document.js, use crypto for the hashing and stuff and you know add your content security policy like self uh, or any particular url that you're expecting and all of these configuration are provided and you can add that okay so you can add that to the meta as a content security policy and then you can put this content csp that has been generated from here all right so you can take a look at that and maybe send a pr if you would like to contribute to this project and now what we're going to do is we're going to build the application and i'm going to go ahead and deploy it and see how our score changes, all right? All right, so we have rerun the test and now you can see that our score has moved to A and we can see that X content type options is check, X frame options check, X SS protection is check and the only thing that's remaining is the content security policy which like I said, uh, I'll probably cover in future videos or you can also send in a PR with the reference that I shared with you, all right. So now if you go to the live side, so now if you check the network tab for the requests that are going on the live side and check one of those and see that the X frame option that we had added, let me zoom it in, has been added over here. And then X content type options is also been added, right? Uh, just to let you know, it is not always best practice to put this information in meta. It's best to put this in the async headers so that it's available with every request. And uh, you can see that we've actually put that in the headers, which is the best place to put. All right, great. Uh, brilliant. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And uh, do start my repository to support my work like all the beautiful one, 173 people have. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. And follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Koditech. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.